For this week's concept map, I've been doing my research on neural networks, specifically how it functions, its structures, and then I'll be discussing in this video a little bit about backpropagation, which is how the neural network learns. So to start, what is neural networks? Neural networks is basically a series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize underlying relationships in a set of data. It came up, uh, people came up with the idea of neural networks because they wanted to mimic the brain. In the brain, there are thousands of neurons or even millions of neurons firing in order for us to make educated decisions. For example, uh, humans learn based on experience. Let's say um, I was walking down the street and then I slipped on a banana peel. Then the next time I walk down the same street, I would pay attention to make sure I don't slip and fall again. And because of the experience of falling, I would make sure to pay attention the next time I walk down the street. Now, because machines can't have that kind of an experience, computer scientists use data to try to mimic that experience. For example, uh, we can use data to tell the computer that a certain number of emails are spam emails, which then tells the computer like the probability of the number of spam emails, which essentially is, uh, is kind of like the experience um, that humans get but for computers. So the structure of neural networks can be complicated or can be very simple. It's every neural network starts with an input layer and ends with an output layer. Then in between those layers, there are a certain number of hidden layers. The amount of hidden layers depends on the complexity of the neural networks. Some neural networks that are not super complex might have one to two hidden layers, while other very complex neural networks can have multiple uh, even t tens and hundreds of hidden layers if the computer scientist really wants it. So now going into the depth of how each layer influences the next, we have to first take a look at activation. Activation is a number inside the circle. For example, the one, uh, the one as shown in the picture is an activation to that specific node. Now each activation is influenced by the previous layer's activation and the weights. I'll go into weights a little later in this video. It, uh, for, the input val for the input activation, that's dependent on the data given, which um, the computer scientists would have to put into the algorithm. Now weights. Weights are essentially the connections between one layer to, to the next. Each node has multiple weights that connect to other nodes in the next layer. Nodes, uh, weights are just randomly generated numbers and they are the ones adjusted during back propagation, which you might remember from earlier in this video, I said it's how the machine, le uh, the machine learning algorithm actually learns. Now biases, biases is just a random number assigned a random number assigned by the computer scientist in order to calculate like which activations will actually which neurons will actually get activated and fire biases allow you to shift the activation function by adding a constant so a bias is just a constant that the computer scientist decides you can think of the bias as a measure of how easy it is to get a node to fire Every single neural network has an activation function. Uh, for this video, I'll be talking specifically about the sigmoid activation function, but there are other activation functions that you can use as well. The sigmoid act, uh, function is known as the squashing function because it maps every real range uh, integer in, into zero and one inclusive. Now, the reason people use sigmoid functions is because in probability, every single probability lies between the ranges of 0 and 1. For example, if flipping a coin gives you a 50% chance of heads and 50% chance of tails, and 0 0.5 is a range between 0 and 1. Which, so by using sigmoid function, we can easily calculate probability, which essentially is what the neural networks is doing. Right? It's trying to get the... Uh, outcome of the most probable de desired outcome to, uh, to be its prediction. Now let's go into back propagation. Back propagation is the way the neural networks learns and accurately makes a prediction. The objective is to adjust the weights in order to obtain the most accurate activations, 
which will eventually uh, result in the most accurate prediction. So for example, you can have a really bad neural networks with maybe like 70, 60, 70% accuracy, while a, uh, which is unfavorable because that outcome is basically, you're still not sure whether the essential, the last prediction is what you want it to be. Uh, on the other hand, you can have very accurate uh, neural networks with over 99% of 99% accuracy. The more accurate you are, the better the neural networks is. So back propagation is a way that is a way to increase the accuracy by adjusting the weights. Now back propagation, the math behind back propagation math is really, really complicated. So there are some definitions and notations that we have to know. I suggest taking a screenshot of this page in order to uh, have a uh, to have handy the definitions of no and notations I will be referring to throughout this video. Some of these definitions are listed, but there may be other other co more common definitions that I'll assume that you know. So before going into the actual math behind backpropagation, there are some observations that we have to understand in order to make the math more smooth. First observation is that the loss function is calculated uh, the, the loss calculation is the square difference of the activation output and the desired output for a node in the output layer. To calculate the total loss, the sum of the square difference for each node in the output layer should be calculated. This equation is shown in the, is boxed in blue uh, and is shown on the page right now. The second observation is that in order to calculate the loss of a particular node, you can get rid of the sigma symbol. Then the loss of a node can be expressed as a function of the activation of that node. Taking it a step further, the activation of a layer is the input of the previous layer's output. As a result, you can write the activation being equal to the activation function of the previous layer when the node of the previous layer is Im imputed. Um, in addition, since the input of a node is the weights that are connected to that node in the previous layer, then everything can be expressed as a composite function. With this in mind, you can get the sum of all the losses as a composite, as well as by adding back the sigma symbol, which takes the uh, sum of all the losses of each node. So in essence, the loss or the error of a single node can be expressed as a composite function of the previous activations and weights. This is important because by calculating the composite functions, we can use the derivative of the loss to update the weights accordingly. So both of, so what I just explained is shown in the, is shown by the equations that are boxed in blue on this page as well as this page. So basically what this is saying is that the loss of, e of every node can be shown as a composite function. Because if we remember the way neural networks works is that one layer influences the next layer which influences the layer after. Because of so much influences, we can actually write certain uh, the loss function as a composite function which uh, takes into account of all the previous layers that influence that particular node in that particular layer. So now we're going to actually uh, go into the math portion. Basically what we're trying to do is calculate the weighted loss of our, of our output, then use gradient descent to change the weights in order to minimize the loss. So for this specific video, we're going to show you the calculation for one particular node, but depending on the complexity of your neural networks, it may, uh, you would have to uh, repeat this process for all of the nodes that you have in the output layer. So first, we'll be calculating the derivatives of the loss with respect to the weight. So, um, So in the picture below, the boxed equation demonstrates the derivatives of the loss with respect to one particular weight. When calculating the partial derivative, the equation we use is shown in the uh, blue box. By using that equation for one single node, 
you're essentially calculating the derivative of the loss with respect to each particular weight. However, since neural networks, neural networks weights are in influence to one another, the weights of the previous layer influences the activation of the next layer, which influences the weights and so on. Because of this, we have to take the product of the derivatives of the composite function that influences the weights in order to find the loss of that specific node. So as we can see in the very last equation, there are three parts. I'm going to break down each part uh, later on in this video and explain in depth of what each part of how each part plays in the role of calculating the derivative. So the first part of the equation, you're trying to calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to the activation of the first node in the output layer. From uh, the previous notation slide, we know that the cost function is as illustrated in the blue box. Thus, we can substitute it into our equation generated from above and simplify the equation to simply two times the activation of the, of the output layer subtracted by uh, the desired output y1 for, uh, node, for, for, for the node 2 of the output layer. This term essentially means that if the weight is changed by a certain amount, then the loss is going to equate the two times the activation subtracted by the desired output y1. This term is important as we will have to substitute this, this term into the overall three-part equation at the end. For the second part of the equation, you're trying to calculate the derivative of the activation of the first node with respect to the input for the second node. From above, we know that the first equation is essentially true. Since we are working with node 1, then we can substitute j uh, for node for 1. Then substituting into the equation, we can simplify the equation as g prime of the layer equals uh, times z to the z sub 1 times uh, of the output layer. Again, this term is useful as we will substitute it into the final equation. Now, moving on to the third part of the equation, the third and last part of the equation, you're trying to find the derivative of the input for node 1 with respect to the weights connecting from node 2 from layer L minus 1 to the node from 1 to node 1 in layer L. From above, we know that each node in J, J in the output, we have input it equal to the first to the first step in the picture. Since we're working with node 1, we can substitute 1 for j, as shown in the step. When equating the third term with what we have now, we can get the third step in the picture. Finally, when we expand and simplify the, uh, the equation, we get that a sub 2, uh, a, we get that a sub 2 uh, of the layer L minus 1. Now, we have to combine every term because that's our final, because that's how we get our uh, loss uh, derivative of the loss function in the end. So when combining all terms together, we have an equation that means if we change the weights by a certain amount, the loss will change by, by the value given with the equation. Um, so as shown in the picture, the equation in the blue box is how much the weights will change if we change, is, is how much the error will change, excuse me, by changing the weights by a certain amount. Now it is, it is important to remember that the calculations that we just did is only for one node changing one weight. Again, with the complexity of the neural networks, you'll have to repeat that same process over and over again until you have calculated what is known as the average derivative of all the weight of all the losses. So in the end, we have to calculate the average derivative of all the losses over the training samples. And that equation is shown in the, in the picture, which is basically we're summing the derivatives and then dividing by the number of weights. So with this in mind, we can now calculate the gradient and then you can put it into the gradient descent algorithm to essentially adjust the weights properly to obtain an accurate result. So summing everything up, we have to first calculate the to the derivatives of all, each individual uh, node and each individual node with respect to changing weights. 
then we have to find the average of the sum of those derivatives to essentially calculate the gradient then we can use that to put into you can use the gradient to put it into gradient descent algorithm to adjust the weights properly to obtain an accurate result so this is the final uh, so this is my concept map on neural networks and i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching